This is the electronic die circuit. So this is the circuit on the left hand side here, this section here. I'm going to read through all of these boxes and afterwards I'll, I'll show you the actual circuit and how it works. If we start with box one, I've numbered them to make it easier for me to explain this. Uh, the three main sections we're going to talk about are the clock, which consists of a 5-5 timer, that's this section here. Then we're going to briefly talk about the counter and what that does. And then uh, I'll talk about the combinatorial logic built up from NAND gates and inverters and just quickly go through that and explain how that works. We're not going to talk about things as advanced as Boolean algebra and K-maps and things like that. What, we'll, what I'll do is just step through a couple of these and show you actually on the chip. So really all you need to know is what uh, these, what an inverter does and what a NAND gate does. And I'll quickly just cover that as well. First of all, there's the clock. Now the clock is a 555 timer, we've gone through this before, uh, the, the capacitor here will charge up and then it will discharge and charging and discharging is an oscillation so the smaller you have this capacitor the faster that oscillator is going to be and number three pin on the i55 is the output pin and it's every time that discharges it's going to go low and when it charges it's going to go high so that feed there from the 555 timer goes into what's called a counter chip here and this chip is it's a TTL logic and it's the from the 74 family and it's called the 7492 so what does the counter do well the counter on every uh, clock pulse here out of these outputs a b and c you're going to have these values so it's a binary counter so you're going to have 0 1 well in binary that's equivalent to decimal number 1 then you'll have 0, 0,1,0, that's equivalent to decimal number 2. So you're going to have this pattern of high and low voltages. So out of this ABC, on every clock pulse that the 555 time, um, 555 timer produces, you're going to get this one of these sequences. It's going to go in turn, that sequence followed by that sequence. And, for example, this clock pulse could be cycling at 50,000 cycles a second, flying through these, these sets very, very quickly. So that's happening very fast. So on the first, uh, for number one, we've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way down to 6, which I've placed to be 0, 0, 0, 0 here. This is a divide by 6 counter. So basically when it, when it clocks 6 times, it then goes back to the beginning. So I'm going to let 6 equal 0, 0, 0. On this side here, we're going to define what the lamps are. Now the lamps will be defined by this combinatorial logic here. So uh, when, for example, this, these lamps here will basically be the physical, so I've got B, C, that means B and C will go on together. So here we see we've got B and C. So when we get, when we're on the clock state number two, which is 0, 1, 0, that needs to make sure that both the lamps B and C are lit up. So that one and that one. And so just to show you how that ensures that, let's just follow it through really quickly. So we're going to have 0, 1, 0. So here we've got the C is 0, the B is 1, and the A is 0. So let's look at the A first. So the A is 0. And when we go into, what does an inverter do? Well, an inverter just inverts whatever the voltage is on this side, inverts it. So if you've got a high voltage, which um, in this case we haven't, we've got a low voltage. So if we've got a low voltage here, for this number here, for, for BC, then we're going to have a high voltage at 2. If we've got a high voltage at 2, then that's high. It means that these lamps here are being fed by a 5 volt line here going down. So that basically, for current to flow, it needs to have a smaller voltage than the 5 volt here. Otherwise, current can't flow. Well, and a high is designated, say, at 5 volts. So we've got 5 volts on this side and 5 volts on that side, then no current will flow. It means that A is, is not going to um, be lit. So let's look at number B. So we know that A is not lit. So let's look at what, what B will do. Well, B here is 1. So if we've got 1 on this side, that means it's inverted, and we'll get 0 volts on that side. Now here, we're moving into different NAND gates. This will go into this NAND gate and it will go into this NAND gate. So at this NAND gate uh, we are at, what did I say it was? You've got to keep a step of this. 
So that's one on that side, naught on that side. We're at naught on this side, on this number three for this NAND gate. So let's just write that down so we'll remember when we do the others. So we're naught here at the moment. And on this one, we're going to be naught there as well, of course. So naught volts on those inputs. So we've got those written down. Before we can carry on, we need to know what these other inputs are. So if we then go back and look at the other input, we see that that's also zero. So C is zero. So if we're at C is zero, then on that side, we're at one. Right, if we're at one on that side, we're at one on this side. Okay, and also, of course, the other thing I, I forgot to realise is when we did number A, which we realised when number A was zero, it was one on that side. So that means this one here is going to be one as well. So we've got one, naught, one. Well, a NAND gate is an inversion of an AND gate. And an AND gate works. Let's just show you what an AND gate does. If there's two zeros on its input, its, its output is a high. If there's a naught and one on any of its inputs, its output is high. The only time its output will be low is when we're all the inputs are one. I've only shown two inputs here, but it applies to any number of inputs. So if there's three inputs, they will only ever be, ze uh, be a zero volt on the output if all of them are high on the input. So in this case, we've got, we've got two that are high and one that's zero on in the input. That means that that NAND gate will be a one on the output because of this condition here. So we'll place one down here just so we know where we're going. We've got one here. Now that means that with a one here, you can see we're going to have a one there. Now that means there's a high on here and a high on here, so we won't have F and G displayed either. So we've got a one here. That means we've also got a one on this NAND gate. And on this NAND gate, we've also got a one here. Right, here's the telling thing. This is a one. This is a one on this input, and it's one on the... These numbers here are referring to the, the numbers on the actual chip itself. So the 9 here refers to 1, the 10 here refers to 1, and you notice that pin 11 is attached to pin 10, so all of this is 1. In other words, so all, if all of this is 1, then we've got a 0 on the output here, and that means we've got 1 on this side. So 1 on that side and 1 on it, that means that all of these lamps these two lamps, D and E, and these two lamps, e, F and G, are both off because we've got five trying to feed a high voltage on the other side. No current can flow. So D, E, F and G are all off. So finally, let's look at this one. We've got, uh, we've got a one on this side because we're coming up through, through this NAND gate here. Remember, we said that was a one. So that's a one on that side. Now, what's five? Well, five is also a one. So we've got a one. So on this NAND gate, we've got a zero and two, we've got a low voltage and two high voltages. Now if we look at our table here, when they're different, we get a one on the output. So we've got a one on the output here. Now a one feeding uh, an inverter means we've got a zero on the output. So lo and behold, we've got something now. It means that B and C will be on. Well, with B and C on, we've got the number two. So I've just gone through the steps for number two. You can do the, the others yourself for all of these, and you'll find that when you do it all, you'll find that for number three, you get, e and, you get A, this middle one, and B and C light up. So that gives you the three here. Then for number four, you'll find that it's B, C, and D, E that light up. B, C, and D, E. So that's your four. And you, you'll see, I've written them all down here. So that's basically how this combinatorial logic works. These uh, NAND gates... They're all stored inside a 14-pin IC, and that pin, that IC is for the for the NAND gates. It's a 7410 uh, DIL 14-pin uh, chip, and then for the inverters, the inverters is a 7404. So they're all 774 series logic uh, uh, TTL logic chips. So I've written that down here in this little square. What else have I I put here? Okay, yeah, the, the interesting thing is. This ha these uh, transitions here, as I said, are very, very fast because obviously this clocking, if we're using a small capacitor here, will be very fast. Now, we can play around with this capacitor here on the circuit. I'm going to make that so that we can plug in different capacitors so you can see all the different speeds that you can produce. And what they'll actually do is because if we put a large capacitor in here, it'll take longer to charge up so the clock the clocking will be much slower. 
we've got a much slower clocking, we'll be able to see what actually happens is when when we we'll have a button basically on the I forgot to mention basically on the i55 timer we've got this button if we press the button it will deactivate the 55 timer and the clock will stop and when the clock is stopped it will be latched at whatever the value was before we just hit the, the millisecond before we hit it this will all be latched so when we push this button we'll end up with one fixed value for the dice now if we change the uh, capacitor here all the time that's not uh, pushed in it's going to be cycling round all the time but because it's cycling so quickly we're not going to see any transitions if we use a really small capacitor it's going to look like they're always lit all the time until we push the button in and we 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 switch the ones off that are not the number if you see what i mean but what we can do as for, just for a bit of interest is increase that capacity to a very high value and then we'll actually see the cycling occur and that's quite interesting to see that because then you get an idea of what's going on with this clock so uh, there's all the parts and that's it really so now I'm just going to show you how it works okay what I've done is I've wired this up just to show you this on the breadboards so that I can manipulate things a bit more easily um, there's a whole bunch of uh, connection wires here so you can't really see the chips but underneath all of these wires there's the there's two 14 pin chips here and above here there's the other 14 pin chips which uh, which is the counter chip just to show you what's going on here so this chip at the top here is this counter and this chip here which is underneath all these wires that's the uh, inverter chip with all the inverters on it and this chip to the right of that is the NAND gates that's why there's so many wires because you can see in the wiring di in the schematic here we have to connect all of these up together and some of the inverters are over here and some so this so the, there's wires everywhere so it's quite uh, easy to to make a, a a simple mistake and put the wires in the wrong place so when you wire something up like this you have to be very very careful and methodical about how you do it which is why a printed circuit board version of this is, is so much easier because all the parts on the printed circuit board are all labeled and you can easily it's easier to do it with a printed circuit board with a printed circuit board you obviously don't have all these leads because all the leads are on all the connections are actually inlaid on the, on the printed circuit board but for the for this demonstration I'm just going to show it on a breadboard uh, so what we'll do is we'll just put the battery on and you'll see the default way that this circuit works and I'll explain what what that is in a second Okay, so what what we're actually seeing now is all of these lamps in this diagram here, B, F, D, E, F, they're all being lit. Now it appears to the human eye that they're all lit, they're all permanently lit, but what's actually happened, the actual cycle that we were talking about, all of those cycles running through, is happening so fast, it just, due to the persistence of vision, it looks like they're always on. But they're not always on, and I'll show you, I'll prove to you that they're not always on uh, in, in, a, in a little while. But first of all, I'm just going to show you the default way that this works. So if we've got our push button here, remember when we push the push button, that's they're all going to latch. So ones that are not actually on at that particular time are going to appear, are going to go, they're going to be basically switched off. That's what it's going to look like. So let's just press it. Okay, so I've pressed that in now, and we can see six lamps lit. Let's press it again. Now there's one, so that's the number six and one we've just cycled through. If I press it again, six again. If I press it again, there's four. So we've gone through six, four, and one so far. So to get the complete set, we want to see five and three. Let's see how long it takes to get five and three. There's two. There's one. There's five. There's two. There's one. There's three. There you go, we've gone through all of them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's your dice. So if you want to roll a dice, you just press it and then you can roll your dice. So that's all it does. So that's the circuit. Now what I want to show you is the fact that at the moment you can't see that they're all changing. But they are all changing and the way we can prove that is to put in a large capacitor and then you'll see it cycling through because what we're going to do is change this C2 so it's very very large so it takes much longer it means the clock is much much slower so we'll actually be able to see the transitions except um, 
unlike what we're we're looking at at the moment, we'll be able to see those transitions. So let's put this capacitor in. So I've just got to see where I place it. Okay, it's there, and let's just make sure that that's in properly. Now this is an electrolytic capacitor, so it's important that you put the the negative side into the ground. And there you go, it's cycling through now. I've just connected that capacitor. That capacitor is a 1000 microfarad, so obviously that clock's running really slow now. So there's three, there's six. It's actually slower than when I was pressing it. There's four. There's two. So I mean, it's, it's about two or three seconds between each um, transition. So there you go, you can see that that actually is running all the time, even though you couldn't see it before, it's running all the time. So let's take that capacitor out. So now it's running so fast you can't see those transitions, but let's put another one in so it's a little bit faster so you can actually see it transitioning a bit quicker. So this one here, although you won't be able to actually read the individual numbers now because it would be moving just that little bit too quick for that, but it's but it show you... There you go. So now you can actually see that they are transitioning, but it's so fast you can't make out the individual transitions. I just wanted to show you that. So that's quite good. So you can play around with that as well. You can get some capacitors and just change capacitors. If you're giving a demonstration to, to someone, a friend or something, you can you can show them that. Uh, so that's the circuit. Of course, when this is in the, uh, the tin, it's uh, a lot smaller than this. The circuit board is much, much smaller than all of this. Uh, this is all spread out because it's on a breadboard. Uh, it's actually quite a small, uh, a small circuit once it's all contained on side the circuit board. So uh, that's that. That there is the electronic die circuit.